ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining us for day 16 of the G1 Climax 2015, it's the 25th anniversary. Uh, we have our New Japan World player set to 15 minutes and 35 seconds, and we will be hitting the play button on go. Three, two, one, go. And we have a, a six-man tag here involving not three, but four juniors, four young boys, I should say including the one in the ring right now, who we haven't seen yet in this tournament, Shotanaka. Yeah, Shotanaka. It's very interesting to me, Ashton, that it was just yesterday that you were calling for more young boys to be introduced into the fold, and then in comes Shotanaka. So I'm very curious as to what this young man is going to bring to the table. And it's crazy because Shotanaka is built like a mini Hanma, man. He is freaking jacked. Absolutely. As you see now, he's really wrenching the side headlock here on Jushin Thunder Liger. Liger, though, the veteran, quickly escapes out of it. And, uh, and yeah, Shotenaka, I think, is a grand opportunity here in his first match. I mean, he's going toe-to-toe -to -toe with Liger here, who is a legend. A nice shoulder block there. Again, we'll have to... We'll have... He's a lot bigger than, uh, than any of the other young boys. I mean, like, obviously, Jay White's absolutely ripped, and Komatsu's kind of bulky, but this dude just has a completely different build than either one of them. Absolutely. We'll, we'll have to see how... Oh, and what a lariat there by Liger. Good Liger God. is the biggest guy in this match, which is hilarious because he's been a junior his entire career. Absolutely. And now, I believe David Finley, or he was contemplating stealing the tie. I think he thought better of it, knowing just let the veteran do the work. And Shotanaka is just being stomped into. Jay White got the tag now. Jay White, and now I guess Shotanaka, or wait, no, David Finley got the tag. Yeah, apparently, White, never mind, yeah. <laughs> what the heck, man? I think Jay White was just given coverage. There's yeah. an uppercut there by David Finley, and man, he has quite the uppercut, this young man, quite the uh, the striker, at least he's coming into his own as such. Yeah, as I mean, it's worth noting that, uh, from what I understand, David Finley actually made his debut this year in the Best of Super Juniors tournament, which is basically the junior division's equivalent to the G1. Right. Very interesting. Oh, another hard elbow to the face of Shotenaka. Good God. Well, I have to see how uh, this uh, young man will disrupt the rankings because as of right now, we still have Yo Yohei Komatsu as the most impressive young boy of the crop, but maybe Shotenaka can, uh, can upset Komatsu there. And look at David Finley, though. Could it be the steamroller? And uh, no, Shotanaka slides out. What a drop nice. kick there. That was almost like a Tamatanga Dolph Ziggler kind of drop kick. Absolutely. Caught the point of that. And now here comes Yohei Kamatsu. Okay, yep. Uppercut back there in the corner. Looks like a back elbow to me. And now he's going to vault over the rope. He does. He's going to try and get that momentum going there. Ducks oh, the so much line. momentum and the forearm. Beautiful. Man, Yohei Kamatsu Ashton, so impressive. Did he get a haircut? He may have. He, uh, he may have changed it up a little bit. No, certainly not changing up his style. This is a hard forearm there to David Finley. Honestly, and an overhead like, chop. Like he's going for like a Goto style as far as the hair goes. Yeah, I could see what you're saying there. Now he's going to charge into the corner here. David Finley, though, got the back elbow. Yep. Staying in it. Nice drop kick. Great form on that drop kick, actually. Absolutely. Now let's see if David Finley can get the tag. He's going to tag in Jay White, man. All the young boys are getting time. And then, oh! Look at that, Taguchi tried to go over that rear view. Jay White had it scouted. That's Good for you, Jay White. You're a better man than most. Absolutely. Look at the hard forearms there to Taguchi. And now Taguchi. Oh, ducks the clothesline. Oh, Jay White leapfrogs over. There's a back elbow. Man, I'll tell you. Yohei, Shotanaka, Jay White, and David Finley all looking impressive. There's an uppercut in the corner there. I know. I don't know. Uh, this is where he goes for the drop kick. That's right. Absolutely. It is. I think he even mocked Taguchi's little pose there a little bit on the top. Yeah, like he that. definitely did. He definitely did. I appreciate that personality from Jay White. Now, could it be the Boston Crab here? And now, Taguchi is going to fight out of it. He does. Taguchi having that leg strength. I guess that comes with being a, uh, a junior. And, oh, look at that. Just gets the rear up. I guess that's the... Uh, and, uh, oh, come on now. And that's that's just Taguchi's mo. It's what we've come to expect. And now, oh, oh, look, look at, that, at that! David Finley just comes flying in from off screen. I'll tell you, something has happened to the young boys. Oddly enough, you know, the same day that there is a new presence in Shotenaka, 
I think they really want to win this thing. All the hip thrusts. These are hip thrusts. You can see they're hitting them with the side of their their body rather than the back of it. Absolutely. And now look and at now that. They are straight up copying Taguchi. I love it. That is hilarious. Oh, oh Taguchi. Of course. Double rear view there. Oh my god. Now he's gonna alternate. Oh. Good God, folks. Never get in a ring with Taguchi. That's my advice for you. That's one thing I have learned throughout this tournament. Never piss off Ishii and never get in a ring with Taguchi. Yeah. Oh, they just hit each other. Oh, the miscommunication. Schoolboy here. Oh, no. Schoolboy by Taguchi. Pick it up. And Liger, the veteran, just he knows he's shutting that down immediately. But now here oh, comes. Here comes Tanaka. No, that yeah, is Komatsu. Oh, that, that's Yohei Komatsu. Our apologies. Uh, look at the drop kicks, though. Man, bodies are everywhere right now. And now Taguchi. Oh, but Jay White is still alive. Jay White's still in it with the forearms. Nice oh, uppercut God. there. Oh, now, oh what, what a... Scary from Taguchi. Yeah. And now could it be the... that before, and now the chicken, chicken wing, wing face buster. buster. There it is. It's One, over. Two, two and then... three count. That was a fun little match. It was a quickie. Absolutely. And so I believe... Shotanaka has actually won his debut, is that right? Well, it's he, definitely not his debut. It's just his first match in G1 so far. First match in G1. So I guess I should say his G1 debut would be more apropos. Yeah. Because I was while I was looking up Yohei Komatsu to see if he had ever won a match before, he's had quite a few interactions with Shotanaka in the past. They've exchanged wins and losses and singles matches and that kind of thing. Absolutely. And figures that... Taguchi would lead them to victory. He's been so impressive in tag team matches overall throughout this G1 climax. And uh, David Finley and Jay White, I like the fire I saw from those guys. I think they really wanted to win this thing. I loved how they took it to Taguchi, but Taguchi unfortunately gets the last laugh, and he who laughs last laughs best. So good on him, though. Good on Yohei Komatsu, he and good on... Uh, he who laughs last is the one that uses the flying butthole attack. Absolutely. <laughs> and Shotanaka has got to be very pleased getting a win here. His first appearance at the G1 Climax. And Liger showing respect to everybody. Wow. But it's Shotanaka. wow. Shotanaka just passing up an opportunity to shake Dushin Thunder Liger's hand. Wow. Could Shotanaka be maybe a bit of a heel here? Very interesting. Maybe just a bit of a dick. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. Who knows? We know the the training and everything that the young boys go through. Maybe Jujun Thunder Liger gave Shotanaka a bit of extra work. A bit of extra hassle on cooking the meals and cleaning the dojo. Who knows? Ah, this match ought to be interesting. Bad Luck Fale and Tamatanga going against Toriano and Yoshihashi. And uh, I read a comment on Reddit yesterday that I really wanted to quote. Toru Yano is better at cheating than most people are at wrestling. Yeah. How true that is, is that? Quote. Yeah, that is an excellent quote. Yeah. I mean, I still can't believe he beat Kota Ibushi yesterday. And in she, the he beat Shibata, too. Yeah. Unbelievable. But the difference between those two are, he beat Ibushi in under a minute. <laughs> like, right. If you look at the freaking... Uh, like the card, the the results card, it looks like Toriano squashed Ibushi. <laughs> oh man, and this team, I said it yesterday that it doesn't matter what pairing you have of the Bullet Club, they work so well together. But it's that man in my mind that's the story here. Bad luck, Fale, who got screwed yesterday. <laughs> oh, stop it! Hey, hey, you saw it. AJ had his feet on the damn ropes. He couldn't I beat that. I saw the ball. referee's hand hit the mat three times while AJ had Foley's shoulders pinned. Ah, uh, you saw nothing. The fact is, bad luck Foley should have gotten the damn victory, and it should be him going on to face Tana. What do you mean should have gotten the victory? He didn't do anything to actually win the match. You're just saying he shouldn't have lost in that instance. He was dominating AJ Styles, and if AJ hadn't used that extra bit of leverage, you know Folly would have kicked out, and I think it was only a matter of time before he got that bad luck fall. AJ well, Styles. we're was... being honest with ourselves, if bad luck Folly was an honorable man, they played rock, paper, scissors to determine who was going to lay down for who, and AJ won. 
So bad luck folly should have just laid down, honor the rock, paper, scissors agreement, and deal with it. Of course, because a tournament that's been going on for as long as G1 Climax has always been decided by rock, paper, scissors. Of uh, course. When it's between stable mates, yes. I'll tell you, look, if, if you're a Bullet Club fan, I'd, I'd love to know what was going through your mind yesterday, because what was going through my mind is that AJ Styles is terrified of his own stable mates. I mean, he gave Bad Luck Fale too sweet, looked him dead in the eye, knowing he screwed him, gave him too sweet, and then he flinched. He flinched because he fears Bad Luck Fale. But the story here is that Chaos is now in the ring, Toriano still shilling DVDs. And I'll tell you what, though, it's going to be a very interesting matchup. Toriano versus Bad Luck Fale down the road. And Toriano always playing those head games. In fact, I expect him in a matter of seconds. And there it is. I was going to say, chuck that bottle at Bad Luck Fale, and there it is. Yeah, I think he kind of squirted most of the water out in Fale's direction and then threw the, the almost empty bottle at Tamatanga. So right. he got a little bit of both of them. But now it looks like we're starting the match off with Fale and uh, Yano, who will be in a match on fr uh, Friday. I uh, I fully expect Fale to shut Toriano down, Ash. I mean, we've seen this man dominate the likes of Togi Makabe while people went, oh, I would not have advised that. Not in the I think it was brilliant. Point, you get it? the big man frustrated. You get him to see red and blind himself maybe a little bit with frustration and look at this he's gonna get him self disqualified if he keeps this up absolutely oh right. yeah see he's going after the ref and everything i think uh i think toriano's tactics are perfect against Fale. and look at that just slaps me in the back of the head and tags out i love it and i'll tell i'll tell you something and oh bad luck Fale. yoshi Aji better be careful that bad luck <laughs> Fale doesn't look in his direction but i'll tell you what i think these tactics at least in this particular match are going to be ever more potent because we are just coming off of, again, the whole controversy, you know, bad luck follow AJ Styles yesterday. And whether bad luck follow wants to admit it publicly or not, it's got to be eating away at him that he will not more than likely be competing in the finals, you know, of his block anyway. And, you know, Yoshihashi moving out of the way of the splash. Both it's a Laird in the corner. And um, who else was it? The Naito. Both Fale and Naito need AJ Styles and Tanahashi to tie. Didn't, uh, weren't Naito's dreams, though, evaporated because uh, Tanahashi beat uh, Makabe? Oh, that's right. Yeah. That also that also killed Fale's chances now that I think about it. So, yeah. So, oh, yeah, no. Fale... I think if, yeah, because if Tanahashi wins, then uh, Fale can't catch up with him. So, yeah, yeah. Right. That, that, that killed everyone's chances, but I, Tanahashi and uh, AJ Styles. It's just those two now. Right, and I'm sure Bad Luck Folly is just so happy for AJ. <laughs> uh, see, he's in the ring here. And it's really funny, too, because if Folly would have beaten AJ yesterday and he would have 12 points now, AJ would have 10, Tanahashi would have 12, AJ could have beaten Tanahashi, and they would have evened out, and then if Folly could have gotten another win, he would have ended up winning the freaking block. Yeah, absolutely. And, and in the case of a tie, he still would have won out anyway because he beat Tanahashi and, it, again, in your hypothetical. And even if Tanahashi would have won, like you said, even if Tanahashi would have won, I think all Fale would have had to do was win his match and he still would have gotten the, the block. Exactly. So I'm telling you, that one match screwed bad luck Fale. As you see there, he just drives Yoshi down and then the cocky cover here with the one foot and Yoshihashi there able to kick out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh... You can t you can really tell that Fale is really really frustrated today between the aggression that he showed towards Toriyano and now the cocky pin on Yoshihashi. There are just lots of signs that say that he is not in a good mood right now. But shifting gears here, Tamatonga in the ring now. Nice body shots there to Yoshihashi. They've really been working over that midsection it seems of Yoshihashi ever since Toriyano was kind of tagged out because he angered the bull. And uh, I'll tell you what, Tamatanga, man, he is a strange dude. I really want to see Tamatanga and Toriano interact. Oh, my God. I, something tells me they'd actually get along pretty well. That's the terrifying part. Yeah, that's what I'm saying, though. Like, I just want to see the amount of mind games that they can share with each other. Imagine this. Each other. Absolutely. This is actually a very interesting tag team matchup because, especially right now, because we have two guys in the ring who have done very well in tag team matches. And one of them has to lose, yeah. Exactly. 
I mean, that drop kick from Tama Tung, and you could see Yoshihashi going in the back of his head. I really think that Yoshihashi's going to end up losing this, but you never know. I'm inclined to agree that Tama Tung has been so impressive. That head shrinker DDT is just, I mean, when he hits it, it's one and done. And Tama Tung is just kind of looking at the referee like, really? But he stays on the attack here. And now look at that Bullet fireman's Club. carry. The Bullet Club is being represented in two tag matches tonight. I feel like it's usually three, but it's this one and then the fourth one. Uh, so the next one won't have any Bullet Club representation in it. But then uh, the first match of the five G1 matches is a Bullet Club only match. It's Carl Anderson and Yujiro Takahashi. And you have to give the ups to uh, Carl Anderson there, at least in that matchup. But oh, Takahashi, sure. you never know with Takahashi. Yeah. And now Toriano is going to get the tag here, and he's in there with oh. Tamatanga. And he goes after the turnbuckle. <laughs> oh, man, he was probably just looking at it all match, thinking, yeah, I'm going to totally rip you off. And then, oh, oh no, it's Anga. Yeah, that's that's actually what Kota Ibushi did to him yesterday, but it didn't really work out too well. And duck, yes, he ducked. Wow. <laughs> and now he's going to do it again and turn around. Let's see it now. Tamatanga. Oh! oh! The How mind smart. games, though. <laughs> I love it. How smart by Tamatanga. And these guys are having an interaction. And oh, look at that bad luck folly coming in. I love it. Those guys had an oh, interaction. Oh, into the exposed turnbuckles. And oh, Tamatanga with the splash. Oh, God. Bad luck falling. folly. Just a body slam. Jesus. And now, look oh, at this, this here. Be... Yeah. And the miscue. Oh, and the whoa, low, low it's to low, whoa, and the and shoulder check. And oh, the no, that's going to do it. One, that's going to do it. Two, three, that's him. it. Wow. Wow. <laughs> Toru Yano is on a winning streak, man. Man, the miscue did the damage. If he beats Fale tomorrow, I'm going to laugh so hard. Or not tomorrow, Friday. I'm going to laugh so hard. And um, he's mocking Tamatanga. <laughs> <laughs> Toriano rolls on, man. Yano, Toru. I love it. <laughs> and the shrug. The shrug is the best. The maker of mischief and Toriano just picked up another victory. Oh, and normally, man. here's the thing, folks. I mean, the Bullet Club usually has a lot of miscommunications, no doubt about that, but it never really costs them a matchup. That's very rare. It did here. And it's, and it's I think just, that, again, that comes down to bad luck folly being just blinded by anger right now. Absolutely. Absolutely. Now look at this match. We've got Tenzan and Makabe teaming up with Kushida to take on Naito, Ibushi, and Dorada. It's going to be very interesting. Naito and Ibushi teaming up is really intriguing to me. I mean, if you just look at this matchup, you would think Naito would be teaming up with Makabe and Tenzan would be teaming up with Ibushi, right? Absolutely. But no, they kind of mixed things up in this. I like that. Certainly this did. Tenzan, I believe. I believe this is for Tenzan. No, this is oh, Mask. Oh, it's Okay. Yeah, I just Masquerada. saw the mask with the horns on it, and I re it reminded me of, of Tenzan's entrance attire. Right. I'll tell you. We just keep rolling on here. It's been an interesting day so far. Day 16 of the G1 Climax, as there is Mascara Dorada now. And I'm telling you, the tournament matchups, I cannot wait to see who is going to be battling for supremacy of the B block. And uh, Ashton, you have been so good to our audience about going through who uh, has the greatest odds and who needs to do what to get to where they need to be. So I'm going to be very intrigued to hear your analysis after each tournament match about where they stand. Yeah, I mean, the biggest matches today are uh, Elgin Goto and... Well, I mean, that's really the biggest one because Elgin has – actually, if you really kind of look at it, because Okada needs to win just to, to, to stay in control of his own destiny. If he wins, then all he needs to do is beat Nakamura on Saturday, and he'll win his block. Uh, Nakamura, Goto, and Anderson are all fighting for their G1 lives. Right. Because if any of those three lose today, they're done. Right. And I think Anderson, specifically, since he hasn't beaten Okada and doesn't face him anymore, he needs Okada to lose as well. So if Anderson wins, but then Okada also wins, Anderson's out. Interesting. Yeah. 
what well, well, you know I feel like Carl Anderson's been one of the more impressive prospects in this tournament. So you know I believe he can get past Yujiro Takahashi, but Okada losing is another matter. I mean the guy is six and one right now for a reason. And he's so, facing the guy with bad ribs in Yuji Nagata. Exactly. So if you're Carl Anderson. I think you got to make peace with the fact that your tournament experience just might be over. Yeah. But well, hey, stranger things have happened. I mean, you're you know, Carl cons- Anderson, you're the biggest Shinsuke Nakamura fan in the world right now because you need him to beat Okada on Friday or on Saturday. Yeah, absolutely. Because and, then, I mean, that's that creates a little bit of a log jam then because. If Anderson, Nakamura, and Okada, just assume Goto loses against Elgin tonight or something like that. Right. If Anderson, Nakamura, and Okada all finish this tournament with 14 points, it's going to be a really interesting situation, and I don't know how New Japan's going to end up figuring that out because then Anderson beat Nakamura, Nakamura beat Okada, Okada beat Anderson. Who wins the block? Exactly. And now that's a very good question, Ash, and that's a dilemma that the G1 Climax may have to face, that New Japan may have to deal with, and Kote Ibushi now in the ring. You know, the, the, the one man I'm really intrigued by in the B-Block you know is Carl Anderson, so I'm really glad you ran down that name specifically. Um, I know you're big on Shinsuke Nakamura. It would be amazing to see him win the B-Block, go on and face either Tanashi or AJ Styles. Can you imagine Nakamura versus AJ Styles? I think oh, that's man. a matchup I really want to see. Well, and, and uh, as far as Carl Anderson goes... His last match of the tournament is against Kojima. And now, granted, Kojima isn't a pushover, but I would argue that he his conditioning is so much of an issue that he might be the weakest player in the D-block. Absolutely. I, I wouldn't argue that point. There is Togi Makabe, who gave one hell of an effort yesterday against Hiroshi Tanahashi. Just couldn't get the job done. But I'll, I'll tell you what, the heart of Makabe, I will never deny the heart of the never open weight champion. Yeah, that was a really fun match too. It was, yeah, it was. Uh, I won't say that that was the best match of the tournament or anything like that because it wasn't. There are four or five matches at least that I would put above it, but it was still just a really fun match. If like, if that match happened in WWE, it would be a match of the year contender. And Ashton, we await on the arrival now of, in my mind, the man of the hour, Tetsuya Naito. And if you're this young man, Ashton, I mean, I I know. We talk about, oh, he's psychotic, he's this and he's that. But do you feel anything about the fact that you were this close? You just had to win your final two matches to win your block, and you lose to Doc Gallows. I mean, how would you feel if you were Naito right now? I probably wouldn't even show up. I mean, he already doesn't care about anything. He probably just shouldn't even show up tonight. And he may not. We're still waiting on him here. Yeah. I mean, and, and to be quite honest... I don't know if if I he not show it. up? Oh, no, there, and, no, there he is. There he is. <laughs> Tell me that wouldn't have been amazing, because it would have. That would have been hilarious. I can't and... believe everybody shows up after they've been mathematically eliminated. Like, you'd think that would be a problem that New Japan would need to solve. Like, oh, these people that are mathematically eliminated aren't even showing up for the matches. We need to create an incentive for them to show up. And if, if you're Tetsuya Naito or... You're one of them who's actually been watching Tetsuya Naito, as we have, and I know many others have. His elimination mathematically from the tournament came as a shock to the system because this man has been so impressive. I mean, think think about this for one second, Asher, and let me put this in perspective for everybody. It's such a shock to the system because we know that the people battling for supremacy of the A block are AJ Styles and Hiroshi Tanahashi. He beat both of them. <laughs> and that's just kind of the Well, I mean, thing. for what it's worth, last year... Naito also beat Okada and Styles. Right. So, I mean, that's a similar situation, and he didn't win the block. Right. It's just, you know, it's a very similar situation to last year. Just, he needs to figure out how to put more than just the big wins together. He needs to, you know, it's one of those cases where it's like almost in the NFL, where a team might manage to pull an upset or two over some of the the playoff teams, but then they lose to teams that they shouldn't. And they lose to, you know, kind of like what Naito did. He lost to Doc Gallows. And I feel like, didn't he lose to someone else? Yeah, he lost to Makabe and he lost to Shibata. And, you know, I, I'm not trying to say that Makabe and Shibata are scrubs or anything. But if you beat Tanahashi and Styles, you should be able to handle those guys. And he didn't. Absolutely. I mean, you're absolutely right. 
the G1 climax, it isn't, it isn't just about winning big. I mean, more so it's about winning often, as often as you can. I mean, it's nine matches. That's right. That's exactly right. Now, if this was any other context and Naito beat AJ Styles and Tanahashi twice in the same month, he'd be in line for a world title shot. But because it's G1 and because everybody else is also involved in this thing, it doesn't stand out as much. And the, the, the prize for winning the tournament which he obviously can't do anymore, is a world title shot. Right. The chance to face the Rainmaker Okada for his gold. The chance uh, to do it, I I believe, at Wrestle Kingdom 10. Yep. So, and now Tenzan. Oh, Tenzan and Ibushi, maybe. Yeah, Tenzan and Ibushi. And these guys, I believe, will be facing each other on Saturday. Or not on Saturday, on Friday. Very interesting, because I could have sworn And actually, no, Ibushi's facing Makabe on Friday. Yeah, because I, I was about to say, I could have sworn that Tenzan already faced Ibushi, and Ibushi, I believe, got the win there. Yeah, yeah, that's that's true. Uh, Ibushi is facing Makabe, and Tenzan is facing Naito, and you you just know that Tenzan and Naito are going to have a problem by the end of this match. Absolutely. <laughs> I love Naito so much. How did he get so good? I, that, that's what I'm saying. Like, he was so impressive in this tournament, but again, I mean, he suffered three losses and that that's really you know that that's enough especially considering you know who you lose to in certain cases as ashton's gone over thoroughly you know who ties with who what happens in this look at the look on his face dorada just tagged him in and immediately this look washed over his face like this disgusting scumbag just touched me (laughs) and And yes tags in (laughs) company pussy i love it <laughs> Naito just does not care. I don't know how he got so good, but however it happened, I am so glad that it did. And now it's going to be Kota Ibushi. Makabe now. Makabe also got tagged in. Interesting so, contrast to Styles. A bit of a preview of what we're going to get on Friday here. And yeah, John, that's a great point. You've got one guy who's perfectly content with just throwing fists all match, and another guy who absolutely loves his flippy shit. Absolutely. Uh, you know, the aerial maneuvers of Kota Ibushi could create what a, a problem for Kogi Makabe. And see that right there, that drop kick right on the button, and then the flurry of strikes here, the alternating between the thigh kick and the forearm. The Makabe invites it all. And notice, though, the Makabe does have some tape on that thigh. I think that was the leg that Tanashi was really working over with the dragon screws yesterday. Yeah, he really cranked on that thing. And now, oh, look at this. Makabe tags in Tenzan. Ibushi backs away. Is Ibushi going to maybe try and get a tag, or is he just going to kind of work with Tenzan here? I, I, if I was him, I would force Tenzan him to Tenzan really wants Naito. a piece of Naito. Yeah, that's not happening. No, it's definitely not. <laughs> oh, wait, wait, wait a minute here. Oh, he's calling for a tag. Look at this. Aha! Naito. Maybe he wants to have a little bit of fun to get his mind off the fact that he's been mathematically eliminated. He still hasn't even taken his shirt off for this match. I love it. I'm telling you, man. Like, if you thought his apathy was bad before, there imagine how bad no it's There is no human be. being on the planet that can make disrobing as entertaining as Naito. I know. It's or I guess the lack thereof. The, like, the inability, the in, the unwantingness to disrobe. I know. <laughs> Tenzon just had enough time waiting, and there are the headbutts there unloading. He's going to reopen Naito up, man. Absolutely. I don't think Tenzon really... Makabe cracked his head open on the top of a ring post a couple days ago. Might have been a week ago. Absolutely. And I I don't really think Naito... uh, I don't think Naito gives a damn, and I don't think Tenzon gives a damn. That's a scary thing. Normally, you think that... Sometimes when Naito is getting attacked, it doesn't even look like he's in pain. It just looks like he's waiting. Just waiting for the other guy to be like... Yeah, I've done sufficient damage. I feel good now. And then he attacks. And I feel like he's even smiling even now. He is. Like, uh, he is. He's smiling. He's so good. I'm telling you, there's something offset about this young man. Something happened to him when he joined that stable down Los in Mexico. Ingobernables. See, you pronounce it better than I do, so I'll leave that to you. And there's the first Mongolian there from Tenzan. Oh, oh come on. Face. Oh, I thought Tenzan was going to hawk a loogie, too. And then the step up in Zuguri there, then off the ropes, and then drop kicks out the knee. I think that was the bad knee, and it was. Yeah. Oh, my God. How is that? Dude, Naito is so good. He changed, man. He Come went on a he went on an odyssey. This isn't Naito. This isn't the same guy that faced AJ Styles at Wrestle Kingdom 9. 
That that Naito is long gone, and this monstrosity is all that's left. Monstrosity? How about brilliant human being? He gets the job done, Ashton. I'll tell you, if he had just put it together against Dog Gallows, and then presumably if he could have put it together against Tenzon, he would have won the block. That's well, how close he was. I mean, you blame it on the loss to Doc Gallows, but it's not like that was his only, only loss, lost. and that cost him this tournament or anything. He also lost to Makabe and Shibata. That is true. I only mentioned the loss to Gallows because, I mean, to your point, because, again, you've been so thorough about the breakdown, he needed to win those final two matches. Well, he wouldn't have my... he wouldn't have needed to win those final two matches, though, if he had beaten Shibata and or Makabe, though. That's my point. Right. Chronology doesn't matter. It's the amount of wins you get. Absolutely. Again, yeah, that's right. It's, it's, it's win often, not necessarily win big. And now Masker Dorada there forcefully gets tagged in. Now he's going to continue the work that Naito started on Tenzon. And I'll tell you, Tenzon's leg has just been in really rough shape between the bow with AJ Styles and then most recently against Tanahashi. Yep. That is going to be a bullseye. And really, honestly, though, if you're Tenzon, and not to be callous about it, but I really don't know if you have a right to complain because just look at Yuji Nagata, and he's been dealing with those ribs for far longer than Tenzon's had to deal with a bad leg. Tenzon's only going to have one match left against Naito, and not saying that's a walk in the park by any means, but Nagata, man, I don't know. He has suffered with those bruised ribs for quite a while in this tournament. I know so. it's crazy to think about, but it is actually possible that if somebody would have gone undefeated up until this point, they would have already locked up the block, and they wouldn't even have to show up for their last match to win the block. Absolutely. And I'll oh, get that. Oh, Mongolian from Kota. And then the flurry of strikes off the ropes. Oh, but then look at that. That fall forward, almost a small and drop or a driver. And now let's see here. It's almost like a backdrop or like a, a jack, uh, a flapjack suplex. Right. And now Makabe there with the hard shoulder block. Because it's knocks. like he's going for a flapjack, but then he flips the guy over so that he lands on his back rather than on his face. Absolutely. Corner Lariat there. And Another corner. Right. There. Now getting the 10 count punches. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And now he's going to go for that Northern Lights. Does Kota, Kota have it scouted? No, he no, didn't. Not. He will on Friday, though. Absolutely. And he kicks out there. And Makabe seems a bit frustrated. See, that's a big problem with Makabe is he shows too much of his hand in these tag matches. It's Absolutely. Almost, but it's... Honestly, that's almost what got uh, Okada caught by Kojima. I mean, he didn't, but almost. And now look at that. That Larry at their hooks the leg, and, and Ibushi stays in it. At least Ibushi can say to himself that he lasted far longer in this exchange with Makabe than he did against Toriano yesterday. Yeah, that was so funny. And now, the forearm exchange here between the Golden Star and the Never Open Weight Champion. Oh, I know. Look at that. The, the, again, the offensive flurry there by Ibushi. The I kicks love and the chops. I don't know what's so cool about that, but it is really cool. And the, just the kick to the chest there. All the momentum. And now moonsault. Oh, and the moonsault. Normally it does a corkscrew variation of that, but that was just a flat, straight moonsault. Ibushi frustrated there. That did not get the win. He's got to stay on Makabe, though. He's got Makabe in a, in a position that uh, not many people get. Oh, oh, look at that. Oh, man. That lariat. Good God, Stan Hansen, eat your heart out. And now look at that, the kick to the head, though. Wow. Ibushi just drilled Makabe right in the side of the head there. Almost looked like he might have even caught Makabe in the ear. Maybe popped an eardrum or something like that. Well, you know, a kick like that has got to throw the equilibrium off. And here comes Kushida. Yeah. But here comes Mascara Dorada as well. Crossbody from Dorada. Oh, man, Dorada now. There, tosses Kushida. Kushida reverses the Irish whip. Dorada goes for a springboard. Kushida, no. Wow, Dorada just hit a springboard arm drag. And now, suicide oh, dive. Wow. Oh, wow. Lands on his feet. Dorada's so athletic, only 26 years old. So impressive. And now he's actually going for that triangle moonsault. Can he get it here on Makabe? Oh, no. no, he does not. Wow. And he didn't stand on his feet either. That had to hurt. In wow, comes wow. Kushida, and Dorada's with him. I think Tenzon is also on the apron, but it doesn't look like any other heavyweights are on the apron. Oh, and look at Dorada scaling those ropes. And again, the but Kushida reverses. Oh, wow. Kimura. Kimura. This is a Kimura, right? Yeah. Yeah. I think, yeah. I He's got it. He's, he's got the torque on that hold. And look at oh, Naito. Oh, look at Naito. 
and Tenzon goes right after Naito, but I think Naito's still smiling. <laughs> so Absolutely, and Tenzon there taking him out. Tell Booker T that it's not bad to smile if you're a psycho heel. There you go. Yeah. And I'll tell you, folks, Mascara Dorado is going to be fired up being in there with the IWGP Junior Heavyweight Champion. But right now, things aren't going his way. As Kushida, oh, high hanging the arm there, right on the ropes. But Dorado, though, still fighting. Look at oh that. Belly to belly? Could it be his arm drag now? He usually doesn't order. No, Hurricane Rana. Wow, the snap on it. And now, let's see here. Frankensteiner. And Kushida stays in it. Don't let, don't let Scott Steiner hear you call it a Hurricane Rana. He probably ripped your throat out. Yeah, that's true. He's a very volatile man when you call it a Hurricane Rana. And, uh, Fire Fireman's scary. What's he going to do well, here? I'm, and... I'm surprised Dorada didn't tap out to the Kimura earlier, honestly. Well, yeah, thanks for Naito for getting that, uh, that, you know, break up there. And look at that pinning coming out. Oh, oh but Kushida Kushida. reversed it. Two, and three that's count. It. Wow, that wow. was fun. That was really fun. What a count. I'll be honest. I thought we were about to see the uh, IWGP Junior Heavyweight Champion being pinned, but Kushida had the presence of mind to reverse the pinning combination into one of his own. That was brilliant. Oh, and, oh, look Tenzon, at and Tenzon and Naito are still going at it on the outside. I love it. Wow, and Naito just shrugging it <laughs> off like he does everything else. <laughs> He's so good. Oh, man. Tenzon. He may not have had the best tournament experience, but he will never be disrespected. Man, I'll tell you what. I freaking love Shinsuke Nakamura, but in this tournament, Shibata and Naito have really given him a run for their money, as or a run for his money, as far as who my favorite Japanese wrestler is. That's amazing to hear you say, because I know you've been a big time Shinsuke Nakamura fan for the longest time, and now, oh, oh Tenzon going right after Naito. Naito just smiling it off. I love it. Uh, and he I spits think... at him again. Wow. Wow. And I'll tell you something, folks. I think the biggest treat of this G1 Climax has been who we've become fans of and who we've really come to appreciate. And me and Ashton both can say that about Tetsuya Naito. Sometimes what he does can get my blood to a boil, but there is no denying how good this man has been in the G1 Climax and really ever since he returned from Mexico and joining that faction, I'm telling you, Something happened to him, and he, and he became a real winner. Uh, man, I'll tell you, I don't think there's anyone in the WWE that I like more than Naito, Shibata, or Nakamura. Absolutely. New Japan is just such an impressive roster. Oh, and now look at Makabe and Ibushi going at it. And Ishii, too. Ishii's another one that I would probably put on the list of guys that I like more than anyone else in WWE. Absolutely. But that's, and now, that's tonight. That's our main event tonight, ladies and gentlemen. Ibushi, or not Ibushi, Ishii. Ishii versus Hanma. And that, I mean, they've already had a match back at uh, New Beginning in Sendai. And that was back in February, and it was a five-star match. And I'm hoping that they can recapture their magic tonight because that match was incredible. And their exchanges were incredible in their tag team match yesterday. So hopefully that magic is just a consistent thing with them. Absolutely. That is going to be a real barn burner. Tomoaki Hanma versus Tomohiro Ishii. And Hanma has yet to get on the winning winning side of things. Has yet to win a match. Kushida is just like, hey guys, I mean, I know that there was just a lot of drama, but guess what? <laughs> we won! <laughs> I love it, man. I love it. Oh, and now this match ought to be interesting, if for no other reason, just because you've got Shibata and Tanahashi teaming up absolutely that's right they're on the same team we've seen that i think once before throughout the g1 climax I, yeah was... once or twice even but yeah they, they're teaming up with captain new japan to take on the bullet club represented and... by aj styles doc gallows and cody hall i mean normally cody hall seems to me like he's normally working alongside either takahashi or carl anderson this seems like a a big step up for him because he's also normally in the first or second match on the card. And now he's on the fourth match. He's in basically the main event of the first half of the show. Absolutely. And I mean, Ashton, no offense to Shibata, but if I'm Tanahashi, uh, Shibata is just in the rear view. You know, he he's in the past 
And I'm looking at AJ Styles in this. Why would you say that? Why would you say that? I want them to fight each other at Wrestle Kingdom 10, man. And you may and you may get it. But first and foremost, Tanahashi has to address the man he has to beat to win the block. And that's the phenomenal AJ Styles. And they are. Yeah, that's yeah. That's such a huge match. That's happening on Saturday, I believe. Or is that Friday? No, that's Friday because they're, they're building up to it in this match. So that would be on Friday. Shibata with his amazing theme music. Makes I'm guessing I'm I'm not to not to cut you off there, Ashen, but I'm okay. guessing sa- Saturday then would be the two people squaring off for the winner of the B block. Well, I mean, if it comes down to Okada and Nakamura, yes. All right. Because the well, and then the other match on on Saturday that I'm really looking forward to is Ishii and Elgin. That's going to be insanity. Yeah, it is. But, yeah, Okada Nakamura is the main event of Saturday's show. So, Saturday. yeah, they need uh, – in order for that to be, like, the big let's determine who actually wins this block kind of match, they would need for Carl Anderson and Goto both to lose today. And that might happen. I mean, I you know. It, I highly doubt it, especially Anderson. Facing off with Takahashi, he knows him way too well to lose to him. I, I would have to agree with you there, and – there is the ace of New Japan, Hiroshi Tanahashi. So close. He just has to beat AJ Styles and then the winner of the B Block. Pretty much two more matches before he can say that he will face the IWGP World Heavyweight Champion, currently Okada, Wrestle Kingdom 10. And we all remember Wrestle Kingdom 9, the back and forth those two men had. Tanahashi, the very first man to kick out of the Rainmaker. That's oh, had to be eating. Off. I know. Uh, I, think that, I think I think that pissed everybody off, my friend. And you know something else? I think that still eats away at Okada to this day. And you know, I mean, it's funny. I think that actually is what originally soured you on Tanahashi. Yeah. And it's taken you this long to finally acknowledge that he's actually really good. I mean, look, here's Because I feel thing. like you, you've kind of, like, gone along with it. Like, yeah, sure, yeah, fine, whatever, he's good. But then, like, at some point in the last couple of weeks, it finally clicked with you that, like, okay, he's not literally Hitler. I mean, I I feel like I've known for a while that he is really good. I just, some of the mannerisms, like, you know, the the air guitar, I always thought it would be a bit excessive. But, you know, I get that everybody has a personality that kind of oozes out of them between the ropes. I can respect that. I mean, look at this man, AJ Styles, now on his way to the ring, leading the charge. Doc Gallows behind, and then Cody Hall behind him. I like how they're literally manifesting the pecking order in their entrance here, at least as far as these three guys go. Not only the pecking order, but also the height in reverse order. (laughs) <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. And is it just me, or does Doc Gallo's face paint look like he's trying to look like a spider? I, I think that is the look he's kind of going for. And I'll, I'll tell you, the Bullet Club, I think, would love to have the IWGP world title back in their camp. There was a point when the Bullet Club held all the gold, Ashton. I mean, they, they, they were on top. They were the epicenter of of New Japan and, dare I say, the wrestling world. Now, while they've still got a stronghold on it, no question about it, uh, their grip has weakened a little bit, and I think they could get it back if AJ Styles can first beat Tanahashi, then beat the winner of the B Block, and go on to Wrestle Kingdom uh, 10 and face Okada. Yeah. I'll tell you what, though, Ashton, to me, and I, you know, I, I don't want to keep vacillating between one block and the other, but to me, Okada is such a wild card. Because if he wins this thing, he gets to pick who he faces. Now, you and I have talked about it extensively. You have to believe that he would pick Tanahashi. But at the same time, I mean, Goto is the only man thus far to give him a loss. Maybe he'd want to get that win back. You don't know. I mean, I, I'd love maybe to know. He'd want to put, maybe he'd want to gain something rather than only risking the world title. Maybe he would want somebody else to put something on the line, too. And he would challenge Goto in a champion versus championship match. That'd be a, a that seems to be event. kind of the, the flavor of the wrestling month these days between ROH doing uh, Lethal versus uh, Briscoe and now WWE going forward with Cena Rollins. Yeah, I mean, that, that kind of seems to be the flavor of the, I mean, even maybe even flavor of the year. I mean, and after, uh, after Goto pretty much said, uh, you know, the Intercontinental Champion just beat the world champion that shouldn't be happening. You, you've got some uh, explaining to do. Maybe uh, Okada would like to explain himself through his actions. And as we're starting off here with Tanahashi and AJ Styles, the go-behinds here, the waist-lock reversals, just insanity between these two. And AJ now going to try and get control of the arm. Yeah, AJ 
is absolutely they call him phenomenal for a reason but he knows how to psychologically pick an opponent apart better than just about anyone else in new japan absolutely you know i i feel like aj styles is such a master technician everybody's always going to give him credit i think throughout his career on his aerial work yeah but it's it's his technical work that i think is is really even more impressive to me and speaking of technical work the exchange that these guys are having right now is phenomenal and uh, yeah, and, and as you say that, Tanaji was teasing a Styles clash. Wow! If he hits that on Friday, I might die. And so might AJ Styles. And you see the look on his face. I mean, he—I don't think has ever been more insulted. At least judging by his facial expression. And he well, is. I just don't know. Done... Bad luck, Fale went for a Fale's clash. Yeah, that's true. Oh, oh she bought the. <laughs> I'm surprised Tanahashi is giving him the light of day. Well, he doesn't want to deal with Doc Gallows, and I don't blame Tanahashi. I think it's more about conservation. You know, he, he he's putting his, his his personal rivalry with Shibata on the back burner. Oh, that and look was such at a that. mistake. Doc Gallows made such a mistake by pursuing Shibata on the ground. Absolutely. How dangerous does a man have to be for it to be a mistake to go after them while they're on the ground? Exactly. It's kind of like that Brazilian jiu-jitsu style, you know, that that fighting on your back. Yeah. And uh, Shibata just so well-versed. I mean, he may not have the best record in MMA. but He only does that against really big opponents, too, because I don't know if you recall, but the last time we saw him do that was against Bad Luck Fale. That is correct. And I was even getting ready to say, like, he may not have had the best record in MMA, but that doesn't mean he didn't learn anything. And now Dog Gal is going to try and use his power advantage to reverse the pressure. He does, but Shibata, though, right back. But And that's the thing, too, is Shibata's technical acumen is so great. He managed to, not only was he fighting from his back, but he managed to get Doc Gallows off his feet into a heel hook, which he then transitioned seamlessly into a figure four. Absolutely. And now look at that. Just, oh, oh my God. He's scraping the face paint off of Doc Gallows. Jesus, Shibata. Oh, my God. A damn here. Oh, and yeah, Gallows is back up in that uppercut, though. I'll tell you what, Gallows, he was in Cody Hall. Cody Hall coming in. Gallows was impressive when he needed to be. He beat Naito yesterday, taking him out and doing the damage. Oh, Uh, Cody Hall, you really, really need to be wary while you're in there with that man. Yeah, that's why. That's just one small example why. And then an uppercut. the, The experience advantage may be too great a chasm. For Cody Hall's power alone to overcome, and we're seeing it here. Just the forearms by Shibata. I'll tell you what, you want to talk about badass smash mouth, that's all epitomized by Shibata here. Yeah. I mean, the thing with Shibata is, it's almost like the bigger and more powerful you are, the worse you are off going against Shibata. Because it seems like all of his stuff kind of reverses your own momentum against yourself. And... The more momentum you can gain with all that mass, the worse you are because then you're hitting yourself. Like, you take a swing at him, and next thing you know, you're on your back, and you're just in pain, and you don't know what happened. (laughs) Absolutely. And, I mean, Ashton, here's the thing here. The thing I love about Shibata is that there's just never any trepidation with this man, how he goes after people. As you see, Doc Gallows, I think, just yanked him off the apron. As AJ Styles goes after Tanahashi. Cody Hall is left in there with Kevin Nugent. They are the legal men right now of their respective teams. Uh, But... Shibata doesn't care how big you are. He will chop you down and beat you up and not think twice. And now AJ Styles is going to get the tag here. So do we think Cody Hall is getting pinned in this match? I think Captain New Japan is getting pinned. I, I have to give the victory to the Bullet Club here. And now, oh, just stomping on the face of Captain New Japan is AJ Styles. It's an interesting theory. Absolutely. As you see now, I think AJ's pretty much got a rear chin lock here on Captain yeah. New Japan. I just feel like because Cody Hall is technically still a young boy, I just figured that he would be the one to eat the pin. That is true, but, I mean, he's in there, you know, teaming alongside AJ Styles and Doc Gallows. I think they'll be able to protect him. It's just my feeling on the matter, and Doc Gallows gets tagged back in. I, I'm almost tempted to ask Doc Gallows if he wasn't so much bigger than me how she bought his boot tasted earlier, but I'll, uh, I'll move on that question. There you see Doc Gallows just choking out Captain New Japan here. 
Bullet Club doing such a great job of isolating. Gallo, you know, the opposite those the long legs and those gigantic feet just makes that move ever more painful. Now Cody Hall back in this thing. And, of course, Cody Hall, the son of uh, legendary Scott Hall. I really admire that Cody Hall came to Japan here to really hone his craft to be the best that he could be. Is he this is the place you want to be. I, I was thinking maybe he was thinking choke bomb, which is more of Doc Gallows' forte. But I sure he's... knocked him slam there by Captain New Japan. Captain New Japan creating the distance, and now he can get a tag, and he does to Shibata. Oh, oh God. Oh, what a boot. Oh, and what a <laughs> forearm. Oh, wow. And another boot to Cody Hall and these forearms. You know that what usually comes after this, right, John? Absolutely. That low basement drop kick. And oh, God. I hit it. Uh, there it oh. is. Oh, and Cody Hall, that look on his face, I think he was actually visibly wincing. And there's the uh, front face lock suplex, arm trap variation, too. And Cody oh, Hall. Oh, that was really close. Yeah, Cody Hall getting the shoulder up. Barely kicked out of that thing. Oh, and now look at Shibata here. Just a rare chin lock. He usually tries to transition this into a sleeper, though. Cody yeah. Hall looks like he's choking on it. <laughs> oh, sleeper! He got it. He got it. Cody Hall's fading here. Oh, he's wow. fading. I'll say he is. Yeah. Oh, uh, that, that's going to do it here. Penalty kick. No! no! Doc Gallows pulls out the leg. And like oh, I AJ thought. AJ Styles after Tanahashi. We've got a wow. Bullet Club triple team going on here. Wow, and like I thought, Doc Gallows and AJ Styles playing excellent defense for Cody Hall. And now Cody Hall back in it here. Oh, no! Wow, Shibata. Shibata is such a monster. Unbelievable. Now, Oh, oh with the uppercut. Gallows. Gallows' uppercuts are amazing. They stun people so quickly. Absolutely. Now, and Captain New Japan with some uppercuts of its own. And, uh, you know, Captain New Japan trying to rally, but Doc Gallows the super kick there. And now she bought it back in against Doc Gallows. Good guy. Now Cody Hall with the Lariat. And now Tanahashi. And could it be the Sling Blade? It looks like it. And there but, it is. I'll tell you one thing, though. Cody Hall throws one hell of a Lariat. Certainly does. And now look at the forearm exchange here. Tanahashi and AJ Styles. They don't want to wait. Oh, the back they don't want to wait. Oh, but Tanahashi with a slap. AJ with the Pele. Good God. We can't even keep up. I can't Oh, even AJ keep up. wants a clash here. Oh, uh, is he going to get it here? Or is Tanahashi going to find a way to counter? Referee telling him no. And oh, AJ thinks better of it. Why was the referee telling AJ not to do the clash? Because Ton I guess, wasn't a legal man. And now Stubbs with him the kick to the back of the head there. To get the New Japan by AJ choke Styles. Bomb. There's the choke bomb. It's going to be it here. Was legal either, is he? Kevin New Japan was the legal man. He stole the tag from Shibata earlier. Oh, okay. All right. Wow. Well, there we go. I guess that's that. That was quick work to Captain New Japan. And you were right, John. He was the one that ate the pin. So. Very interesting, and Cody Hall not even in the ring to enjoy this win with his teammates. Absolutely, and AJ Styles and Doc Gallows, that teamwork towards the end of that matchup, absolutely on point. And I'll, I'll tell you what, guys, Friday is going to be insanity. It's AJ Styles, it's Tanahashi, who is going to win the A block? And oh, I can't wait for that match. That is going to be something else, folks. Half of the equation will be complete on Friday. Because whoever wins this, all they have to do then is just wait on the winner of the B block. And then whoever wins that takes everything. Oh, man. Doc Gallo's staring down Shibata. Oh, man. All kinds of stare downs going on right now. And for the moment, Tanahashi leaves the ring. To AJ Styles in the Bullet Club, but will he reclaim his yard on Friday? That is the big question here. Shibata just kind of leaving angry. I guess he's uh, a little bit salty that his teammate got pinned and he couldn't do anything about it. Absolutely. All right, guys. Well, that would be the end of the first half of day 16. And, uh, uh, these tag team matches are, are so consistently entertaining. It's kind of crazy to think that they don't really mean anything, and yet we're still able to get drawn into them like we have been. But uh, the, the real show is what starts next. And, man, let me tell you, we've got a pretty amazing card lined up. Anderson Takahashi is kind of a uh, – could go either way. Could be a sinker. Could be a classic. 
just because of the entertainment factor. Uh, Elgin Goto is going to be a freaking barn burner. I'll tell you that right now. That's going to be just a strong style. People are going to be trying to kill each other kind of match. Kojima Nakamura, you know, is going to be entertaining until Kojima starts to get winded. Nagata Okada, I'm looking forward to it for no other reason because that's going to be a bitch to call. Hanma Ishii, though, is the match that I'm looking most forward to. How about you, John? That match is going to be absolutely incredible. You're not going to want to miss that, guys. Ishii and Hanma are going to tear the house down, and we're going to answer a lot of questions about the B-Block here tonight. We can't wait for you to join us. I said it yesterday, and I'm going to say it again. I think Hanma might finally get a win under his belt now that Ishii's been mathematically eliminated. We'll see. We will see for part two, which we will be doing next. See you guys then.